On June 16, 1976, Kearney killed Michael Craig McGee, 13, of Redondo Beach. Records confirmed that McGee had a lengthy history of juvenile delinquency. Kearney claimed to have picked up McGee, who was hitchhiking from Inglewood. What? Yeah, Inglewood. Avenue near Lenox to Torrance. According to the police, Kearney had befriended the boy and invited him to attend a camping trip to Lake Elsinore over the course of a weekend. Kearney claimed to have perceived McGee as a potential threat and shot him without warning after McGee openly boasted of his criminal exploits and inquired about the presence of cameras in his home. Oh, about the presence and location of burglar alarms in Kearney's home. Later, when interviewed by detectives, Kearney implied that he had destroyed the remains, stating, quote, I disposed of the body. You aren't going to find him. End quote. The victim who ultimately led to Kearney's arrest was John Otis LeMay, 17, whom he killed on Sunday, March 13th, 1977. At approximately 5.30 p.m. on, um, at approximately 5.30 p.m. on that same day, LeMay had told a neighbor he was going to Redondo Beach to meet a man named Dave, whom he had met at a local gym. This was, in fact, David Hill, who had given LeMay the address to Kearney's home. Hill was absent. When LeMay arrives, so Kearney invited him in to watch television until Hill returned. Without provocation, Kearney impulsively reached for the, his pistol and shot LeMay in the back of the head. Kearney later dismembered the corpse and dumped the remains in the desert. When his killing spree was at its zenith, Kearney's odd tendencies went largely undetected. A local grocery store owner named Jerry Stevens did, however, note that Kearney frequently purchased butcher knives after examining them and inquiring about the quality of the steel. Stevens also described Kearney as a loner with an eerie sense of quiet about him. So, um, Stevens also described Kearney no, I said that, sorry. Kearney's supervisor at Hughes Aircraft referred to him as, quote, a model worker, end quote. Aren't they all so freaking normal to start out with? And then you're just like, nobody, nobody, nobody noticed anything fishy about this guy. Nobody? Not one of you? Got some questions. Got some questions. LeMay's remains were found on March 18, 1977. Police had actually been to Kearney's home for the LeMay investigation prior to Chance's kidnapping and murder. The police soon discovered that LeMay had been seen in the company of Kearney and Hill, and warrants were issued for the arrest of Kearney and Hill on June 3rd. Kearney resigned from his job, and the two fled to El Paso, Texas. The fugitives' families persuaded the pair to turn themselves in. Kearney surrendered at the Riverside County Sheriff's Office on July 1st, 1977, along with Hill. Yep, they went after both of them. But, alas, <laughs> somebody's going to get away with murder. Um, and, um, David Hill, 36 at the time, was eventually cleared of any involvement in Kearney's crimes and was released. I have so many, like questions about this because you lived with the guy and he was always bringing home these other men and like the smell and like just never like was he never home is that why is like I don't know it just I guess I can understand if maybe he was like killing them elsewhere and then taking the bodies home or or not home, if he was, like, killing them elsewhere and then dumping the bodies, I can understand maybe not knowing about it then. But, like, this guy had to be home at some time, right? So, like, did you just never actually see anything? 
You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. For me, Dennis Rader, I could see his wife not knowing. This case, I just feel like there was some involvement from David or some complacency from David. But I'm not the professional, so nobody asked my opinion. <laughs> I just, I don't know. There's just, it just seems so sketchy. Like, you knew nothing. You knew nothing at all. But they they did clear him of his involvement, and they stand by the fact that they could not find any reason to indict the boyfriend. <laughs> Kearney made a full commit confession, admitting it to a total of 28 murders. And subsequently to seven more. In order to avoid a death sentence, he agreed to plead guilty. Kearney was charged with 21 counts of murder and, as agreed, pled guilty. Kearney was given 21 life sentences. Police are certain that Kearney was responsible for the other seven murders he admitted to, but lacked the physical evidence to charge him. As of 2022, Kearney is incarcerated at California's Mule Creek State Prison. That's a doozy, isn't it? Y'all know cases that involve children at all. They they take a lot out of me. Just because children are defenseless. And I think anybody that attacks children is just sick and they need help. But I don't know that I believe that they can be rehabilitated. I really don't. Um, it's, it, it's like an addiction. You can't get rid of the urges. You're always going to be a pedo. You're always going to be a drug addict. Even if you're in recovery and you stay in recovery for the rest of your life, you're still considered a drug addict or an alcoholic. So, no, I don't, I don't think that, um, I don't think that they can be fixed or rehabilitated, but, um, not my, not my place to decide that. Um, as always, please don't do anything I wouldn't do. Be cautiously kind to others and make good choices. And I'll see you all next week for the 70s.